Hi, this is Mike Green, um, dodgy on the Lightwave forums. I'm going to show you how to use my plugin MG Breakup. Um, here we have a uh, solid block. Ta da! And basically, we run MG break of MD, it brings up this panel. You have um, your break surface, this is the surface that's going to be applied to the bits where it's broken. Uh, your fragment prefix, <coughs> that's if you're um, saving, it basically saves a part on each piece um, and you can call that whatever you want. Uh, it'll also save it as a layer name if you're using distribute, which basically distribute um, leaves each of the broken pieces in its own separate layer. Um, iterations is the number of iterations that it will do to break that thing up. Um, in this case it is because each piece is broken in two it's basically two to the power of whatever your iterations is. So um, for eight it will be 256, uh, seven it's 128, and six it's 64. Okay. Jaggedness um, it uses a kind of a breaking block to break up each piece, um, and uh, that's usually that can start as a sphere if it's curved or a cube if it's straight. And the jaggedness will just um, jitter the points in that um, object so that you get sort of jagged areas along the breaks. Um, you can you know increase or decrease the jaggedness or just leave it at one <coughs> so you have a curved which is going to be a ball break shape a straight which is basically a block straight shape um, cut shape uh, and then you've got chunky or bullet if you do it chunky then it breaks it into solid chunks like you might imagine a concrete block will break into if you use bullet, it'll do a um, circular radial pattern. So that's more for if you're kind of breaking a piece of glass using a um, using a sort of a bullet. If you want a bullet breaking shape, uh, you can choose your axis for your bullet shape. So sort of you know, if it's a Z, it'll be along the Z axis for like windows and stuff. You can choose how far out it breaks away from the center of the break, uh, and you can choose where the bullet center is going to be. Okay, so if we set it to six, uh, and then just go OK, what it does is you'll see it break into the different bits. Um, so you can see it's these aren't e these aren't the final parts. Uh, these are sort of bits on the way to being fully smashed to pieces. So it's taking each piece and copying it into a new layer and then breaking that piece into two bits as well. Uh, so this is six, so this should take up to uh, 64 as I said. At the moment it's up to about 45. You have a little bar in the status bar um, showing you how far along it is um, breaking. So here you have it almost done. And there you go. This was not set to distribute, so all the pieces are in individual bits. So if I just select a piece like that, and then hide the rest, you can see that it's created an entirely new piece. If we bring up the surface editor, you can see it's got break as the broken bit, and that's the outside surface. I've already got a break surface I use for something else, so if we just copy and paste on that, you can see that it's applied. If you bring up the polygon statistics window, 
and just unhide all the pieces. Um, you can see that it's named all the parts, different fragment parts. Okay. And uh, that's just handy if you want to pull these bits apart, apart or, you know, whatever. Okay. I've done one previously using the 8 setting, which is 256 bits, uh, which takes a little bit longer. Um, it uses the native lightwave boolean function, so um, this can lead to some um, problems because it's not perfect. Sometimes it'll um, leave little odd polygons that shoot out and stuff, um, but in this case it's worked fairly well. Um, we send that over to layout. And you can see here, I've already got one set up. So, what we've got is a crashing effect. And we have the hard effects settings. Um, we basically apply the gravity to it. Um, set the collision to be by node. Start by collision. A break distance of 10 centimeters. That means it will start uh, doing interpenetration of itself when a piece has moved 10 centimeters away from its original position. Um, so it will allow things to break up more easily if that's um, got a certain distance. Um, stop by stabilizer will stop the pieces when they um, get below a certain threshold in moving. Um, that's useful for stopping little twitches that you get at the end of the animation um, when they're all supposed to have been stopped. Uh, I set the self-interaction to sphere. Unfortunately, Lightwave doesn't have a self-interaction of node. Um, presumably, they thought it was too computationally expensive when it would have been quite nice to have it. Um, so I've set the self-interaction to sphere. Now, <coughs> if you have the size set to 100, you can see that the spheres all overlap. So that can cause a bit of problems, you know, when it's trying to do sort of the interpenetration collisions because they'll kind of pop out of each other if they're trying to stop it, you know, if they're crashing into each other. If you set it to about 50 or say, you know, 60, then it puts it to a more um, sphere inscribed in the circle. So um, that way the penetration won't look as bad. Um, it'll still sort of push them out from each other but you won't get lots of popping uh, and it'll look reasonable. You won't probably notice um, too much of its own interpenetration. So if we press calculate you can see it's smashing to bits onto the ground. You can see here you've already, you got a piece. Oh, it's just stopped moving. That's good. If we just select, select that, and then there you go. It's a smashing piece of rock. Okay, just for the collision <coughs> object on the ground, the plane. Uh, I just used it with bounce bind power to 120, friction power to 5, friction power to 5, roughness to 20. That gives a little bit of a scattering effect when it um, when the pieces collide with it, so it doesn't look just like a smooth piece of glass. Um, and there you go. Um, I hope this has been informative, and hopefully you'll be able to smash things relatively easily. Okay.